So let's turn our Bibles to book of 2 Thessalonians. 2 Thessalonians chapter 1. 2 Thessalonians chapter 1. We're going to look at verses 5 through 9. 2 Thessalonians chapter 1, verses 5 through 9. 2 Thessalonians chapter 1, verses 5 through 9. The title message is How to Go to Hell. How to Go to Hell. 2 Thessalonians chapter 1, verses 5 through 9. How to Go to Hell. How to Go to Hell. The Bible says, 2 Thessalonians chapter 1, verse 5 which is a manifest token of the righteous judgment of God, that ye may be counted worthy of the kingdom of God, for which ye also suffer. Seeing it is a righteous thing with God to recompense tribulation to them that trouble you. And to you who are troubled, rest with us when the Lord Jesus shall be revealed from heaven with his mighty angels, in flaming fire, taking vengeance on them that know not God and that obey not the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, who shall be punished with everlasting destruction from the presence of the Lord and from the glory of his power. Brother Calvin, can you please pray for the message? Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you for this morning, Lord, that we get to come here, um, listen to your words, fellowship, Lord, worship you, Lord. Lord, I just pray that you fill Pastor Jay with the Holy Spirit at this moment, Lord, so that he can preach with power and conviction, yes. Lord. Speak through him, Lord, and use him mightily, Lord. Help us to learn and use what we learned in our lives, Lord. There's so many wrong doctrines out there, Lord, so please tell us the truth and help us to understand your words. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 How to go to hell. Hell is a topic that not too many people like to talk about. If you were to ask ordinary American, they don't really want to talk about hell too much because a lot of them don't believe it anymore. As time passes by, people's belief of literal burning hell goes down as well. That's why people take it for granted. People don't even think of it seriously because of Hollywood, because of all this you know, movies coming out, people making fun of it, cartoons. So people think that hell is a place where people just hang out. You just separate from God, as some of the many cults do believe. But hell is a literal place where souls will be burned for all eternity. That's right. Literal hell. That's why, you know, people, whether they like it or not, you know, if you don't trust Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you're going to burn in hell. During street preaching, you know, one of our sisters, Sister Tracy, was talking to a woman, and she had issues with our kids holding sign, talking about hell. Don't burn in hell. And supposedly, you know, she believes in Jesus Christ, and you know, she believes in God. But she doesn't believe in the right Christ, and she doesn't believe in the Christ that we believe. That's right. Because Jesus Christ came down from heaven to die for you and me because of hell. Yes. Right? He preached most about not heaven, not doing good works. He preached most about hell That's right. during his ministry. Amen. Why? Because hell is a literal place. Yes. Then people have to realize And you, as a Christian, have to realize that there is a literal burning hell out there. And what are you doing about it? You have to think about hell. Many, many churches out there, secular churches out there, they don't talk about hell. Not many preachers talk about hell. Hell's essence of negativity. It's a negativity for all eternity. Because when someone goes to hell, they can't get out. You'll be burning forever and ever. Yes. That's why people don't want to think about it. People, when they know they're a sinner and they know they're on their way to hell, they don't want people to tell them. They don't want young men holding a sign 
the wicked shall be turned into hell. They don't want to read that. Why? Because they're scared. People are ignorant. People, because of everything that they've heard in their life, and because of such a humanistic, liberal society that we live in, they don't think of hell as a big deal. Right. Then, as Bible believers, you and I have to let them know how to go to hell so that they won't have to go to hell. That's good. Because during street preaching, you know, Brother Kelvin was leading someone to the Lord. Amen. And the brother was Bridges, and he got saved. Praise the Lord. Why do you think he got saved? Because he doesn't want to burn in hell. Amen. Uh, not because, you know, Brother Kelvin is such a nice guy, per se, you know, or because, you know, some Asian guy talking to a, you know, black guy. No, because he does not want to burn in hell. I, mean, I was talking to this young man named Gio, just walking by, just stopped him. And he wanted to leave as soon as possible. But once I started talking about hell, you know, I got his attention. And he didn't want to burn in hell. Amen. And he got saved at that point. Amen. So hell is a word that will resonate with anybody in this world. Yes. When people are mad at each other, what do they tell each other? Like, go to hell. Right. right? I mean, unfortunately, if they tell us go to hell, we can't go to hell. Right? Even if, even if I wanted to, I can't. Right? I mean, God forbid, I, I, I never want to go anyways, but even if I wanted to, I can't. Because, you know, once saved, you're always saved. I mean, that's the blessing, and that's the gospel of Jesus Christ during this period then why don't people get saved from that little lake of fire? And there's a manual. Satan has a manual. And Satan says, this is how to go to hell. So point number one, don't believe that it exists. That's it. You know, Satan's deceiving everybody. This media is deceiving everybody. This world is deceiving everybody. Your own mind is deceiving yourself that there's no hell. Saying that the hell doesn't exist. Then why would you know, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ say in many verses in the book of you know, Matthew and all the Gospels, for example, if, and if thy hand offend thee, cut it off, it is better... For thee to enter into life maim than having two hands to go into hell. Like book of Mark, chapter 9. Matthew 10, 28 says, And fear not them which kill the body, but are not able to kill the soul, but rather fear him which is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. And Matthew 25, 46 says, And thou shall go away into everlasting punishment. And we know Revelation 20 and 1, 8. You know, street preaching verse, but the fear of an unbelieving, abominable murder, whoremonger, socialist, idolaters, and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. And shall cast them into the furnace of fire. There shall be wailing and gnashing of teeth. So our Lord and Savior constantly preached about hell. And as a Christian or as a, someone that, who says, I believe in the Bible, because there are so many definitions for a Christian nowadays, right. everybody's a Christian. Yes. I mean, a joke. And they lump, you know, like Catholics as Christians. Right. So it's amazing if you were to see some statistics. It is a majority Catholic nation, yeah. but they're saying that's a Christian nation. Devil. They're not. Right. I mean, they don't believe in the same doctrine, then how can they be same? 
the Bible that they use is different from the Bible that we use. Right. Then how can we be same? How can we have same faith? But they are one of the religions where many, many, many people say there's no literal burning hell. Believe it or not. If you want to burn in hell, and if you want to go to hell for eternity, don't believe that it exists. That's right. You'll end up there one day. Yes. Yeah. Uh, it doesn't matter if your psychologist tells you that there's no eternal hell. There's no punishment life after death. You're just going to be separated from this world. You're just going to be separated from God. Certain religions tell you. Then you will go to hell. Yeah. Whether you like it or not, that's what's going to happen. You could think that, and you could tell yourself. Sometimes people tell themselves, and you tend to believe yourself if you tell yourself over and over and over. You tell yourself that you're the smartest, right? And then you start thinking you're the smartest, right? Like you look yourself in the mirror, you are the smartest. And you say, oh, and then you're like, oh, you're the prettiest, right? You look at yourself in the mirror, you're the prettiest or you're the most handsomest, right? And then you start believing yourself. And people start believing that there's no hell. And that's a recipe for eternal disaster. But I'm telling you, if you do want to go to hell, don't believe that it exists. Then you'll end up there. Right. I mean, a lot of times, you know, people think hell is a farce because of so many you know, liberal preachers out there. There's so many false preachers out there. They only talk about heaven. Who doesn't like talking about heaven? Right. They say, isn't it funny how many, many people will believe that there's heaven, yeah. but they don't believe that there's hell. That's right. It just doesn't make sense. Right. There's good and there's evil, right. you know? And God is just God. Yes. How can he just have heaven? I mean, the verses that, you know, we read, I mean, it's a, it's a comforting verse. Look at verse 6. It's a 2 Thessalonians chapter 1. Verse 6, seeing it is a righteous thing with God to recompense tribulation to them that trouble you. Yeah. Yeah. Now, this is a little bit off topic, but if you're struggling with, you know, taking vengeance on someone that wronged you, let it go. Amen. God's going to take care of it. You shouldn't be bitter about it as Christians because human beings are very wicked. Yes. Very much that. I might tell you this all the time. My expectation of you is down there. Amen. It's dirt because, you know, that's what we are. Yes. We're just sinners saved by grace. Yes. We're like less than nothing. Then you expect people to sin. Yes. You just hope that they don't sin as much and grow as a Christian. Amen. But it's not up to you to take vengeance on people out there, right? If someone conned you and stole a lot of money from your family, of course, you know, you take all the you know, legal steps that you need to take. Well, you don't take your gun and a rifle and, you know, try to snipe them or something. I mean, that's literally you're taking the vengeance into your own hands. Right. You know, you, you don't have to be that vigilante. Let God take care of it. Amen. So going back to our message, how to go to hell? Number one, don't believe that it exists. Then you will end up there. Yes. I mean, Bible says in Isaiah chapter 5, Verse 14, therefore hell has enlarged herself and opened her mouth without measure, and their glory and their multitude and their pomp, and he that rejoices shall descend into it. So the hell is growing because more people are dying and burning in hell. Yes. We have how many billions of people in this world? And how many billions of people in this world do not believe in hell? that it exists. Yeah. 
Think about many of the religions out there that believe in reincarnation. Think about, you know, Hinduism. Think about Buddhism. And those two countries make up the largest population in the world. I mean, one has 1.2 something, other has 1.3. That's what, like 2.5 plus billion people. And you ask them, like, okay, you know, I just want to be reborn as something better than current life. But unfortunately, you know, you're just going to be end up in hell. That's the truth. The majority of those people are on their way to hell every second. And according to the word of God, yeah. they wake up in hell and they're burning in there. Then you as a Christian has to really think about that on a daily basis. If you remember this point number one, people are going to hell because they don't believe that it exists then it's your job and it's my job to tell them that it exists. Amen. Again, I'm telling you that because many people are ignorant. Yes. They only been, you know, fed with, you know, lies and false, you know, media all their life. If you tell them and they reject it, then that's different. Right. But it's your job and it's my job to go out there and tell them about it. Because some people have been waiting all their life, just like some of you, just like myself, for someone to tell me that little hell exists and how I'm going there. Because all these years, you know, I didn't even take it seriously and I didn't even believe it for real. But Word of God will do a person, a whole lot of damage, as in you'll really cut him. It's a sword. Yes. Then you have to use that sword to get to people who don't believe that hell exists. But if you stay stubborn and continue to believe that hell doesn't exist, then you will end up there, and you'll burn there for eternity. Amen. Whoever is listening, I, mean, I don't care you're president. I don't care you're some, you know, nobody out there. I don't care you're anybody in between. If you don't believe that hell doesn't exist, you will go there for sure. Yes. Then if I were you, I'll rethink. Man, what if hell really does exist? Then what should I do? Yeah. Then that's where you come in. That's where I come in. That's where you have to preach the gospel to them. Then, what's the second way to go to hell? Now, somehow, because of point one, you believe that hell exists, right? But you can still go to hell very easily. Point number two, you don't do anything about it. Yeah. You don't do anything, then you will go to hell. You'll burn there for eternity. You've heard someone tells you through street preaching, you see a young man, young woman holding sign that you're on your way to hell. You hear them preaching, and you just don't do anything. When you don't do anything, nothing's going to happen. However, you are going to end up in hell. If you know the gospel, if you know that Jesus Christ is the only way, if you know that only trusting him will save you, but if you don't do anything about it, then you're going to burn in hell. That's right. You're going to go there for eternity. Because so many people procrastinate. Yeah. So many people are lazy. They always wait until next day, or they think that they could take care of it later. Right. How many times have you spoken to someone when you're witnessing they say, okay, it's all good, I believe it, but I'll just wait. Many. It's just not the right time. Yes. I'll do it tomorrow. I'll do it a week later. You know, I'll do it, you know, I'm sinning a little less. 
Now, I'll do it, you know, when I feel like it. Those people never do anything about it. Right. It's just like you, as a human being, Woo. when you procrastinate, when you put off things to do it later, usually don't do it until way, way later, unless someone, I don't know, like barks at you, or unless you get punished for not doing it. It's free will. Amen. That's why if you want to go to hell, just don't do anything. Don't do anything. And as Christians, if you want to get punished by God, don't do anything. Yeah. I mean, if a unsaved person goes to hell for all eternity because they don't do anything, what do you think is going to happen to you? If you don't do anything for Jesus Christ, then you will be punished. Amen. After you got saved, so forget about, you know, what happened in the past. After you got saved and you became a new creature, Woo! whatever you did for the Lord, whatever, whether it's good or bad, I mean, sometimes if you don't do anything that's really bad, yes. you'll be punished for it. That's right. You're supposed to read your Bible. You don't read it. You'll be punished for it. Amen. You're supposed to pass out track, witness. You're supposed to preach the gospel. If you don't do it, you're going to be punished for it. Amen. You're just a lazy person. you got to be punished for it. Amen. If you don't do anything, you got to be punished from an almighty God who sends a soul to hell for eternity. Think about it. That's why you and I fear God. Amen. He is someone who will send a soul to a literal burning fire to suffer in torment forever and ever and ever and ever. Yes. The weather's been hot. It's unbearable sometimes without the AC. Sure is. But it passes by for us. Yeah. Like, you know, sometimes cool weather comes. We could wait for it. But once you're in hell, you can't wait for nothing. You're there forever and ever and ever. Get saved. And Almighty God, who will do that to a soul who doesn't trust Christ as their Savior, think he's going to let you get away with doing nothing for him? Right. He's not. That's why you have to think about your Christian life right now. I mean, what are you doing for the Lord? If you're not doing anything for the Lord, don't think that you're fine, right? I mean, a lot of times God's given you, God's given me, God's given everybody certain type of talent to use for him. Yes. I mean, it could be instrument, it could be the way you talk, it could be your conversation, it could be anything, you name it. But if you don't do anything about it, then you'll be punished for it whether you like it or not. And then don't bark at me. You could bark at me all you want. But someone that you have to talk to is the Lord. That's right. Someone that you have to get right with is not me. It's with the Lord. Amen. Yes. You could run out of this church, but you'll never run away from the Lord. Amen. Especially if you trusted him as your Lord and Savior. He's inside of you. Yeah. You're sealed with the Holy Ghost. Right. What do you think you're going to do? You think you could outrun God? Never. You know, sometimes you and I get into this false, you know, sense of place where, you know, the Lord doesn't see this. The Lord doesn't really care about this. I mean, you're a fool, and I'm a fool. Yes. The Lord sees everything. Right. I mean, the Lord's inside of you if you're saved. And the Lord's going to make sure you pay for it, whether it's good or bad. That's why I do something. Amen. But if you want to burn in hell, if you want to be punished at the judgment seat of Christ, don't do anything. Yes. And don't think that I'm encouraging you to. Don't do anything. I'm just telling you what's going to happen if you don't do anything. Yes. Obviously, you want to be the opposite. 
you want to do something. Amen. Then if you're not saved and you know that hell exists, then do something about it. Yes. But here's catch. Point number three. Even if you do something, you still go to hell if you don't believe in the right gospel. Let's turn our Bibles to 1 Corinthians chapter 15. 1 Corinthians chapter 15. 1 Corinthians chapter 15. So this is the gospel of Jesus Christ. This is the gospel that you and I believe. This is the gospel because we believed we got saved from hell. Do you believe in this gospel, or do you, been, uh, do you believe in another gospel? 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Moreover, brethren, I declare you the gospel which I have received, and wherein ye stand, by which also ye are saved, if ye keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless ye have believed in vain. So this is important verse. Apostle Paul is saying that many people believe in vain. That's why just because you repeat after someone in a sinner's prayer doesn't mean that you're saved. That's right. And sinner's prayer is important, too, for those of you who think that it's not necessary, right? right. You know? Many people just know it in their head. Right. How many people have you talked to when you talk about Jesus Christ? They're like, I already know. You know? That's right. If you ask them about, have you heard of Jesus Christ? They say, majority of the people say, I heard of Jesus Christ. Yeah. And... Many people already know that believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. And especially people who grew up in the church, they already know this gospel. However, there's very, 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 very big danger where it says, ye have believed in vain. Sometimes people just know it in their head. They never did it from their heart. Can you imagine you grew up in church and it became a habit to you since you were four? You're like 25, 30. You don't even know how, why you got saved, how you got saved. You think that you're saved because you just repeated a prayer after someone. A lot of people go to summer camp. They get emotional. And they trust Christ and they think, you know, just repeating after a prayer, they think it's okay. No, you have to believe what the gospel said. Yes. Let's go to verse 3. For I deliver you, first of all, that which I also receive, how that Christ died for our sins, according to the scriptures. So according to the word of God, Jesus Christ died for you and I. Amen. And that he was buried and that he rose again the third day, according Amen. to the scriptures. Amen. That's it. What more do you need? I mean, Romans 10, 9 said that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thine heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. That's how you get saved right now. Amen. Yes. That's the gospel you should trust. However, if you don't want to believe that gospel, then you could go to hell. As harsh as it might sound, but that's what the Bible says. Amen. So don't argue with me. Don't argue with your sister. Don't argue with your brother, your parents, or someone next to you behind you. Argue with the Word of God. That's right. The Bible says you trust Christ as your Lord and Savior right now, believing that He died for you, Amen. believing that His blood can wash all your sins. The Bible says you have eternal life. Amen. Once and for all. Yes. However, if you want to trust different gospel, if you want to trust something other than this, then you can go to hell. And you can burn there forever. And what are some of those things? The start by salvation by works. If you think that you have to believe Christ and do good works to go to heaven, you'll go to hell. I mean, for by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourself. It is the gift of God, not of works, as any man should boast. So there's no works involved. Amen. If anybody's telling you right now that you have to believe in Christ, and you have to do good works, you have to make some check marks, right? The devil. Right? 
okay, you have to do this good work, you have to do good that work, you know, you gotta be a great disciple. Any kind of works is involved. They're deceiving you. They're false preachers, yes. false pastors, ministers, whatever you call them. Okay. They're going to send you straight down to hell and they're gonna burn there together if that's what they believe. So, if you want to go to hell, believe in different gospel, and one of them is salvation by works. And next one, salvation by speaking in tongues and you know, those visions. Tongues are for a sign, signs are for Jews, right? If you think that you're saved because you're speaking in tongues, I mean, again, believing Christ is already a given. Everybody says it. Paul says it too. But they always have a plus something. Right. And that plus, in this case, is speaking in tongues and seeing Christ in your vision. The devil. Isn't it funny? If you were to ask some people, how do you know that you're safe? I trust that Christ. They should stop right there. Amen. Yeah. Well, they go, I trust that Christ. And, you know, I, I also speak in tongues. Spiritual tongue, you know. Or like, I trusted Christ, and I also saw him in my vision. Well, some people would just tell you straight up, you know, I became a new man because Christ spoke to me last night. And that's their salvation testimony. They get offended if you show him the word of God and says, no, that's not how you get saved. Yes. Yeah. And they think that you are the child of the devil. That? Saying that, telling them they're on their way to hell. When they think that they're going to heaven because they saw Jesus Christ. They saw Jesus in their dream. I mean, that's Satan right, sure showing right. up in those visions. Yes. So if you're listening, and if you're not saved yet, you can go to hell by believing salvation, by tongues and visions. And this one, Brother Calvin likes a lot against it. Calvinism, <laughs> right? You want to go to hell? Just believe in Calvinism. No free will. You know, think that you know, you're chosen. You know. Same person can think like that. If you have any kind of brain, and if you're not ignorant, just think about it. How can an almighty God just say, you're going to heaven and you're going to hell? Don't you think he'll have a whole lot of issues at the judgment? Yes. Everybody will be raising their hand. Hey, you're not that fair, God. Right. How come... He was chosen, and I wasn't chosen, right? right? But too many people think like that. I mean, it has gotten into Baptist churches, yes. so-called independent Bible-believing Baptist churches where they think that, you know, yeah. you're chosen. Yes. Then it's ridiculous to think that you don't have any will to choose Christ or not. Then what does that equate to? It's like point number two. You don't have to do anything because God's already chosen some to go to heaven and some to go to hell. You believe in that doctrine, Calvinism? Then you will end up in hell. Amen. Don't blame God don't blame me. Don't blame anybody else because of your ignorance, because of your rejection of the gospel, you're going to hell, straight down to hell. Yes. Hopefully, when you hear such a strong statement, strong preaching, you wake up and change. Get saved. What's wrong with America? Come on. 
there's no strong preaching anymore. That's right. That's the truth. It's not about pleasing people's ears. It's not about being the best speaker in the world. It's about just preaching the word of God. Amen. It's just about telling it like it is. Yes. If the Bible says, believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved, then there's action involved. You believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Yes. And you could know for sure that you could go to heaven. 1 John 5, 13. These things have I written to you that believe on the name of the Son of God, that you may know that you have eternal life. Amen. Wow. I mean, I'm pretty sure there's smart alecky Calvinists out there you know, they'll twist the verse, twist the context, and right. just tell you, but just believe as what he says. Amen. I know I'm going to heaven. I don't care if you like it or not. Yes, that's right. Because I believe on the Lord Jesus Amen. Christ. Amen. And it's my free will. Yes. yes. But if you're deceived by so many of these false preachers out there and think that the Lord chose someone, and I'm just going to do good works, and I'll try my best. Trying your best will never get you to anywhere. And that goes to the next point. You trust your own righteousness, and you go to hell. A lot of people think that they're good. A lot of people think that they're nice. You might think that you're good, and you might think that you're nice. But your righteousness is as filthy rags. Amen. You have to compare your righteousness to Lord Jesus Christ's righteousness. That's right. And if it equals, then you go to heaven. Yeah. If it doesn't, then you go to hell. Never will. So many churchgoers, so many people who do who does charity, who do charity, they're like, you know what? You know, if Lord doesn't Except me to heaven, no one should go to heaven. I mean, I've heard those ridiculous statements. Right. Oh. Maybe you're trying to live righteously in people's point of view. Okay. But what about your inside? I mean, have you ever had dirty thoughts? Crazy. Have you had hatred, you know, immortality? I mean, inside sin is sin too. Yeah. How can you dare to say in front of an almighty God, my righteousness is good enough to go to heaven. No. Then why did Christ die? Amen. I mean, why did Jesus Christ die for you on the cross, shedding his precious blood, if you could go to heaven with your own righteousness? That's where many factions of people out there if you ask them a question, like, you know, I believe in Christ, but you know, I'm also good. I try to live a good life. You hear that a lot. Yes. I, I try to live a good, decent life. You know, I didn't kill anybody. I didn't steal anything. You know, I try to be a faithful husband, faithful wife, a good father and mother. But what's that got to do with you getting saved? You're just trusting your works to go to heaven. That's right. Your own filthy righteousness to go to heaven. You just can't. Amen. Let's go to Romans chapter 10. Romans chapter 10. So it is very important. If you ever trusted your own righteousness to go to heaven, you will go to hell. Romans chapter 10. Let's start with verse 1. The Bible says, Brethren, my heart's desire and prayer to God for Israel is that they might be saved. For I bear them record that they have a zeal of God, but not according to knowledge. This is very important. There are a lot of people who are very zealous, especially so-called religious people, but they don't have right knowledge. I mean, we have Jehovah's Witnesses out there standing in the corners, holding and living. You know, they live a very clean life, supposedly. Yeah. They're very zealous, yeah. but the wrong knowledge, yes. wrong doctrine. Amen. 
not just them, Seventh-day Adventists, right. you know, everybody out there. Yeah. Then what's your job and what's my job Bridges. to tell them the right knowledge? Well, you can't just sit there and do nothing. Let's go to verse 3. For they being ignorant of God's righteousness. Again, they're ignorant. Yes. Someone has to tell them the right thing, the truth. After they hear it and they reject it, it's their fault. But you and I have task. It's our duty to go out there and tell them how to get God's righteousness. Continue, and going about to establish their own righteousness have not submitted themselves unto the righteousness of God. Make them realize that you need righteousness of God to go to heaven, not your own righteousness. Verse 4 says, for Christ is the end of the law for righteousness. Then, then how can you get God's righteousness? By having faith in Jesus Christ. For Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone that believeth. Tell that to Calvinists. You want God's righteousness? Don't just wait for it. You need to believe. You need to take it into action. I mean, just these four verses alone... You could use it to just go out there and witness to any person. Who doesn't want God's righteousness? I mean, literally. You go to prison. You talk to inmates. Why wouldn't they want God's righteousness? Right. Then you can show them. You can tell them how to get God's righteousness. And that's by having faith in Jesus Christ. Look at verse 9. Uh, we use it many, many times. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness. So you have to believe from your heart Amen. to get God's righteousness Amen. through Jesus Christ. It's got to be from the heart. Don't just hear and think that you're okay. You have to put it into action. If you have never trusted Christ as your Lord and Savior from your heart, then you're not saved. You just know it in your head. Continue, and with the mouth, confession is made unto salvation. Look at verse 13. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And verse 17. So then faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. So through the word of God, you get faith because of the word of God. You know, you and I can get saved. Because of the word of God, we can go on. It's our compass, you know, it's our measure. Yes. Then, if you want to go to hell, don't believe what he says. No, don't believe it. Only believe the part that you want to believe. If you don't believe the whole Bible, and if you don't rightly divide the Word of God, you will go to hell. Simple as that. Yes. That's why the Bible says, now is the day of salvation. Amen. Don't take any chances. You don't know what's going to happen five minutes from now. Right. The Bible says, you know, life is like a vapor that appears for a little time and then vanishes away. Yeah. If you've been on the fence, and now... You've given this list of things that will make you go to hell. You know, if you didn't believe in hell, that it existed, if you haven't done anything about it, if you believe the different gospel, right? And if you've been trusting your own righteousness, then it's time for you to turn from those thoughts, yes. turn to God, and trust Christ and Him alone as your Lord and Savior. Salvation is so simple, yet it could be the most complicated thing. Depends on how you believe it and how you understand it. Be like a little child. You know, one plus one is two, then you just believe it. Amen. You don't have to be like, oh, it equals window, it's not two, it's like Very there's some nice. other variables and stuff. You know, it's just. Just make your brain go crazy. Yes. I don't want to think like that. I want to be simpler. Amen. Then if you haven't trusted 
Christ as your Lord and Savior, then you have to do it. Yes. And you only have to do it once in your life. Amen. That's it. How many times did Christ die for you? Once. once. Why do you want to be some calls out there where you have to, you know, kill him every single day and eat him every day and drink his blood every day? Right. It makes no sense that it's literal, right? Huh. It's symbolic, yes. right? If you were to die right now, if you don't know where you're going, then chances are you're following this recipe, yeah. how to go to hell. Yes. But you don't have to end up in hell. All you have to do is know that you're a sinner on your way to hell, believe that Jesus Christ died for your sins, and with repenting heart, receive Christ in your heart as your Lord and Savior, then you have eternal life. Amen. That's why Philippian jailer, wouldn't you think he was so happy? And Apostle Paul said, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. He didn't say anything else. He didn't say believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and speaking in tongues. He didn't say believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, but you'll never know you're going to go to heaven. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, you know, and give money. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and follow every step of this list, you know. No. He stopped right there. Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. Amen. And I'll end with this. Let's turn our Bibles to Ezekiel chapter 3. Ezekiel chapter 3. Ezekiel chapter 3, verse 18. Ezekiel chapter 3, verse 18. Then as a saved Christian, you and I have duty to do something. I have to reiterate it over and over and over because you and I are lazy beings. Yes. You and I are slugger. Yeah. You and I don't do nothing if, yeah. unless we're forced to do things. Yeah. So make it a habit. Make it dear to your heart. Ezekiel chapter 3, verse 18. When I say unto the wicked, Thou shalt surely die, and thou givest him not warning, nor speakest to warn the wicked from his wicked way to save his life, the same wicked man shall die in his iniquity, but his blood will I require at thine hand. Uh, you will not be guiltless. I will not be guiltless. Every, can you imagine? Because some people meet many people yes. during your lifespan. And if you have not told them the gospel, man, and they don't get saved, and they burn in hell, all of their blood will I require at thine hand? I mean, how scary the judgment will be at the judgment seat of Christ. You and I have no excuse. Do you have chick tracks? Do you have gospel tracks readily available? Yes. We have it everywhere in the church. Front, side, back, you know, yeah. everywhere. That's why uh, I try my best. Man, you always miss some, but you do your best. Okay, I might not see this person ever again. I'm not going to take any chance. Here you go. You know. I was talking to Brother Richard on Friday. You know, many people reject tracks, right? Yes. Well, like, okay. Smart people will receive it if you're smart. Then they might receive it or they might not. Don't burn in hell. They might receive it. They might not. Yes. But you've done your job. I mean, you did it. You did what you're supposed to do. But if you just walk past that person or if you just ignore that person or if you talk about everything except the gospel, man, their blood will be required at your hand. And that's some warning that God has given to you and I. Yes. It's something that you and I have to tell ourselves on a daily basis. Yes. Because our body, flesh, always tells you, you have another chance. Right. You have another day. You don't have to do it today. Jim, just wait. You know, Jane, just rest. You know, someone else will do it for you. And that person dies next day. And it happens. Yes. 
He could be your neighbor. He could be your friend. He could be your family. He could be your coworker. It could be just your acquaintance. How are you going to handle that situation when Lord asks you, why didn't you do it? They could have gotten saved. Why didn't you do it? Ultimately, it's their decision, but you could have done something. Man, and if I see that soul sent down to hell at the judgment, how terrible will your heart break? It doesn't matter if they were your enemies or not. Hell's not meant for human beings. I mean, Jesus Christ died for the worst of the enemies, you and me. Yes. And your heart will break and break and break. Tears going to drool down from your eyes for a long, long, long time. The punishment will be there. We just don't know how terrible it will be. It's up to you, it's up to me to do something about it. As we see so many people going to hell and more and more becoming more wicked and not even caring about it, it's your job and it's my job to go out there and preach the gospel, not only on Fridays, when we have 50 people, we have so much strength, when it's just you by yourself yes. and just going out there and doing what you're supposed to do. Then there's going to be good news. God's going to give you fruits. The greatest thing you know, I hear you know, as a preacher is hearing someone says, you know what? I led someone to the Lord. Uh, if you don't do anything about it, you're not going to lead anyone to the Lord. Right? You have to open your mouth. You have to go somewhere. You have to move somewhere. And you have to care for the soul on their way to hell. Think about it. How to go to hell? You know. I know. How are you going to stop them from going to hell? Let's pray.